In this video, we're going to check out a feature inside the beta version of Fluent Cart that I'm actually pretty excited about, and that is the ability to easily handle digital downloads, whether these are single digital products like PDFs, those kinds of things, or if you're selling products that have licenses associated with them, you can have Fluent Cart handle the license management for you. Cool thing with this is it can be handled inside the dashboard, in your dashboard, and also inside the client's dashboard that they can access via your website. So let's take a look at how you can set up your first digital products and some of the options that are available currently in Fluent Card. So this is the site we're going to use as a demo. This is using the free version of Bloxy, and I've just simply have Fluent Card installed and I've done no customization to it. So if we come into, for example, the shop, you can see we've got a membership subscription. And we also have a digital product. If we look at the membership subscription, we can buy this now, and you can see this tells us this is £129 per year until cancelled. Or if we come back out and take a look at our digital products, a typical digital download, could be software, PDFs, those kinds of things. Let's view that product. You can see I've got two variations here, the standard single license version, which you can see is $29.99, or we can go for the lifetime deal version, which is $99.99. And if we buy that, it'll take us through the process of purchasing it. So we jump into the Fluent Cart dashboard, you can see inside here it gives us an overview of the activity, including things like license key generated and also the sort of order details. I'll cover things like this in its own video further on down the line. It's not what I want to cover today. If we jump into licenses, though, you can see we have a digital product, a single license, who purchased it, the number of current activations, and the actual key itself. If we come and take a look at the product details, you can see there's our license key, there's all our details, and if we wanted to upgrade, we could absolutely do that inside here. So there's an upgrade path if you wanted to jump from being a sort of single license owner to having the lifetime deal, that can be handled with Fluent Cart, which I think is pretty nifty. If we hop over to the subscription section, you can see we currently have that subscription running, who the customer is, if it's active, the price, data is created, and so on. So all that data is available directly inside you. And if you want to jump into your customer, you can click view your customer, and you can see there's all the details, their orders, license key, those kinds of things. So let's take a look at how we would create these products for ourselves. Now, if you're enjoying this video and getting value from it, why not hit that thumbs up button down below just to tell YouTube that you are getting value. And while you're down there, why not hit the subscribe button as well to be notified when new content just like this is added. If you're not getting value from it or you're not enjoying it, you can hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with this video. So let's come into products. Let's add a new product. We'll give this a title. We'll say this is a digital product and we'll add it. And now we can start creating and setting up the various parameters for this particular product. So let's start off by giving it a short description, a long description. You can add your media, which is basically the featured image. And if you want to add more images in, you can do, but let's add one in. I'll just select this image. We'll use this. You can see we can add additional images if you want to. So in the same kind of thing as you've seen inside WooCommerce. Then we come down to the actual pricing. Now, at the moment, you've got simple, but you've got simple and simple variations. Now, this is going to expand from my understanding, so we will have more options here. So don't think this is, you know, all you're going to get. This is still the beta version. And when version 1.0 comes out, I'm sure there's still going to be more key features added in to the overall software. So any comments down below, just bear that in mind. So let's start with a simple option. So select payment term. We can choose from a one-time payment or a subscription payment. So let's say this is the subscription option. And we'll say this is going to be $19.99 per year. You compare at prices basically if you're offering a discount. It'll sort of show you a strike through, that kind of thing. Not to worry about that. Then you've got your interval. So you can set this to yearly, monthly, weekly, or daily. So we'll say this is an annual subscription. Then you've got your installment count and your total price. So you can set the values up inside there if you want to offer installments. Great if you're doing something that's a higher ticket item, maybe even sort of like handling a subscription for you know access to a community or a course or something, you could do that here. You can set a setup fee if you want to. So if you were offering a service that it required a setup from your side of things, you can apply a fee inside here. And one of the cool things I do like about what Fluent Card brings to the table is this manage profit and cost. So the cost for the item, the profit you're going to make, and your margins. This will all kind of be calculated for you. We're not worried about that because it's our own digital product, so not too much of a problem. Manage your inventory inside here if you want to. Again, it's a digital product. We're not going to limit this, but if you did, you can specify the total stock, how many are available, how many on hold, and how many have been delivered. Again, lots of these values will be updated as you make sales on these products. 
So let's just uncheck that. Then you've got your downloadable assets. So if we select this, this is where you'll add in your file. Now, there's two ways in which you can handle this. If we go to add an asset, you can see we've got choose a variant. Now currently we only have this one, which we've already just created. Select that. You can give it a file name if you want to. You can choose your file. So we click on here. You can see this is storing these locally. So in other words, on the server that we currently have set up. So I've got an archive and I've got a 10 things before you launch. So I've got a couple of files accessible to me. So I don't have to upload the file every single time. So if you create a product variation with different prices, but the same product, you can just choose the product each time from here. The local option, as you can see, that's all we currently have available, but you can set up S3 storage. And I'm assuming that they will expand this out to other storage options. So if you want to store your files off your local server for additional security, you could do that. You just have to set it up. We'll take a look at that in a moment. We'll say archive, we'll confirm this. And you can see that's filled all that out. We'll save our asset. And now we have our file or files associated with this particular product. And then you can come over and you can specify product categories. So you can see I've got digital software inside here. This is just for your organizational purposes. Your product type, this is a software product. Again, this is just organizational. You can create these and you can create them directly inside you or you can create them inside the dashboard. So you've got your various different options inside you know, your product categories, product types and so on. Just mirrors what we have here. Let's just update this so we save those and commit those changes. Your upgrade paths. Now, we don't have any upgrade paths at the moment, but I'll show you how you can activate that in a moment when we create variations. So not just a single product, we have simple variations. Your integration. So currently, this is a coming soon feature. But if, like me, you use something like Fluent CRM, my understanding is from the documentation, what we'll be able to do here is specify integrations where we could integrate into Fluent CRM. So if you were using this to sell a course, for example, or something you want to give access to in something like Fluent Community or something like that, you can apply tags and you can have these added into your Fluent CRM. And it'll give you a lot more flexibility about how you can integrate the various different Fluent products together. This is something I'm looking forward to. This will give me a reason to change from using Circle, where I like the whole payment setup side of things, to coming over to using Fluent Card and Fluent Community, when I can have a much easier integrated way of being able to handle the shopping experience, subscriptions, those types of things. So we're not going to do anything there because it's currently not available. Coming to the license settings. So for this, it's a digital product. We want to sell it. We want to have licenses because it's software in our example. We'll choose the option from here. And now we can choose how we want to handle the different sort of licensing of the products. You can see there's our sample digital software. That's just the only product we currently have. Activation limit. So we'll say, how many do you want to limit them to? We'll say for this price, it's 10. How long is the license valid for? You can see we'll set this to one year because it's a subscription. So the subscription will renew every year. And with most cases, that license will also renew as well. But you can obviously change that to whatever you want. You may say you want to set that for 10 years so it doesn't change the license. You could do it in here. And you also change the frequency from lifetime, years, months, and so on. So if you sell a lifetime option, you specify your license is valid for the lifetime. We'll say this is valid for one year in this example. Version number, well, it's up to you if you want to handle these kinds of things. So license prefix, we're going to say this is WP Tuts, for example, so I can check them. There's our file, and we can drop in a description. Is this a WordPress plugin? If it is, you can enable that. Now you can drop in the readme URL for the text file, the banner, icon, required WordPress versions of PHP versions, and so on. In this example, we're going to say it's not. So now we've created our product. So we edit our product. We now have a product that has a digital download. It'll handle license management and all those kinds of cool things. Now, that's for a single product on a subscription. Let's say, for example, now we also wanted to give them the option to have a lifetime deal. Well, let's change this from a simple to a simple variation. And you see it retains our original. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another one in. This one is going to be our lifetime deal version. Again, it's still digital. Select the payment term. This is a one-time, not a subscription, because it's a lifetime deal. I'm going to say this is 199. You can add a different image in if you want to. If it's a different product, we're not going to worry about that. We'll say save price. So now we have two products and we have two variations. So now what we can do is we can come up to the upgrade path. And you can see now we have the upgrade path option. So let's select this and say what we're going to go from and what we're going to go to. So in this example, we're going to say we're going to go from the yearly one 
to the lifetime one, we're going to set it to be pro rata. So in other words, if they've paid 1999 is 199, they'll only play the pay the difference based upon the remaining period of their license. But obviously, if you didn't want to do that, you could uncheck that, drop in a discount amount, whatever you want to do. It's however you want to handle it. Again, I'm sure this will be expanded upon as well to give us even more options as this matures and goes past version 1.0. Hit save. So now we set up our upgrade path. The final thing we need to do is come into license settings. You can see there's our lifetime deal. We can set the activation limit. So we're going to set this to be 10 again. You can see lifetime is selected, so we don't need to do anything there. Hit update settings. And now we've created that upgrade path. We've got a lifetime deal with a different pricing structure and all those kinds of good things. So all the licensing has been handled behind the scenes for us. So there's our product. As you can see, we've got our yearly price and our one-time price. So we choose the one time tells us 199 choose yearly it tells us what that price is let's select our one time hit buy now that'll take us into our checkout i'm already logged in so all my details are filled out and i'm using cash on delivery to test things so let's place our order come back into our dashboard and as you can see there's my order tells me it's pending because i'm currently using cash on delivery so what we're going to do click we're going to specify this has been paid click mark paid jump into our licenses and you see there's our license key. You can see the number of activations, etc., all set up. Come into our dashboard. There's our license key for our new one. And as you can see, we can simply copy this. It tells us activations and all those kinds of good things. That's how easy it is to be able to set up these kinds of digital products alongside with license keys and so on. So now let's take a quick look at how we can set up a subscription for something like a course or something like that. Again, let's jump back into our products and add a new product. It's a digital product. And give us a name and we'll add our product okay so there's our product we can drop in our short description a long description i'm not going to worry about media or categories and things we've seen how all that works set our pricing up i'm going to say this is a subscription we're going to say this is 129 per year again like i say you've got the installment option setup fees and so on not going to worry about inventory and there's no digital downloadable assets for this example so let's just update this product. There are no upgrade paths because obviously this is a simple product. Integrations, like I say, when they come online, we'll be able to integrate this with Fluent CRM, gives us a lot more flexibility, and there are no license settings to handle. So let's just come over and preview our product. So there's our course subscription. So we can say, let's buy now. Again, you see everything is filled out. We'll place our order. Again, go back into our dashboard. There's our course subscription. Again, let's just set this to be paid. There you go. That's now finished. Log into our account, and you can see there's my course subscription. Tells me the price, how much I paid. It's completed, and everything has been set up. Again, you see the subscriptions are available here. If we click to go into subscription, we can cancel this. We can update our payments and so on. So we've got access to all that information. And as we get more transaction details, when we're using things like Stripe or PayPal or in those kinds of payment gateways, that data will be available to us inside our account dashboard as well. And finally, if we come into the subscription tab inside our dashboard, you can see there's our subscription details. It tells us how many bills have been collected, the payment method, the next billing date, the collection method, and so on. So everything you should need is inside you to handle those subscriptions alongside what we've seen dealing with license management and so on. I think Fluent Cart is going to open up a lot of possibilities, and hopefully what you've seen in me using this is just how quick and snappy everything is inside you. This is the biggest takeaway that I've got from this is just how quick it is to work inside Fluent Cart. I said this in my initial review and I still stick by it. It's still snappy as anything. And I'm not using this on any kind of powerful setup. I'm using InstaWP, which is decent resources, but nothing mind blowing. These are just basically test sites being set up. But what are your thoughts? Have you tried Fluent Cart Beta for yourself? You can try it. You can join the waitlist and you'll be notified when you can get access to it. Would this make you change over from something like Essential Digital Downloads or WooCommerce and those kinds of tools to handle your digital products? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.